when we talk about soloing, it's not only about the notes that you play, but it's about the way that you play them. It's also about the structure, how you organize them together, but today I want to focus specifically on the way that you play certain notes, and that is called articulation. I also use the word inflection for some of these different techniques. So I'm going to go through some of my favorite techniques for articulation and inflections that add character to my sound, and I think that you might find some of these useful. <laughs> first one I want to talk about is just a basic articulation and it is the staccato note which is a very short sounding note something that is not held out versus legato on a single note would just be holding the note out for the full length of of that note so staccato is when we cut the note short and the way that I do that is all with my left hand um, initially when I'm going to be playing staccato notes I'm going to actually press a little softer. And this is a great thing to try. It, you can try pressing at different uh, pressures with your fretting hand to get different sounds. You can see how it sounds if you push really hard. If you push too hard, you're gonna pull the note sharp. It's gonna be a little too sharp. But if you get used to that just nice, even pressing tension and then go back from there and you can kind of just push on the moment that you're playing the note to create a staccato note. And I immediately let my finger bounce back up. So I'm thinking about it. Just pushing down, hitting that note real quick with my pick, bouncing back up. I really like to do this in solos as a contrast with other um, legato passages or different um, inflections and articulations that I'll show you later, but I'll just show you a little sample of what um, a staccato line might sound like. That's a descending. So I'm just using staccato on the way down to create this kind of separated sound between the notes. It's these really short notes that have a specific feeling to me that I, that I like. And notice at the end, I didn't play a staccato note here on a note that I was holding because it created a nice contrast. So that's the second point about staccato is that um, use staccato as a contrasting way to play notes, especially if you're always playing long held out notes. You, staccato is a nice contrast to put, add some counterpoint to that and to some extra character into your playing. Another thing I like to do <clears throat> when I'm playing staccato is to move my picking hand back towards the bridge. And if you've explored with picking areas at all, you'll notice that at the bridge it has a much more metallic and harsh treble type sound. And I find that I really like this sound when I'm playing staccato lines. It can sound more cho even more choked and uh, have a really cool character. So the flip side of staccato would be legato. So long notes, smooth and connected notes. On guitar, legato tends to refer to playing notes without picking every single note. And so if I'm playing a little scale line here, I'm going to be plucking one time per string, really. And one thing to be careful about with legato notes, playing legato, is to always accent the first beat of each grouping, such as the first 16th notes of a four, uh, group of four 16th notes. Um, so that you don't lose the rhythm as you're playing these legato lines that run through multiple strings because you're going to be picking on beats that aren't necessarily the strong note. Trying to make sure that I'm emphasizing that in my, on my, in my mind so that um, <clears throat> that first note of each grouping has a strong feeling. So 
So, staccato. Legato. Those have very different sound textures, and so the contrast between those is a fun one to play with. The next concept I want to talk about is sliding, and this is a pretty versatile technique. I like to use it for short slides, like sliding up a whole step, whole step into a note that I'm targeting, or half step slides. I like to do them up and down. I like to do further slides, like a minor third, like I just did. Even further, up to minor seven or an octave. And notice how I'm using the slide down a whole step as a way to come out of a note. That's another interesting idea to play with. So if you're playing a note, let's say I'm playing I played a slide down a whole step at the end of my last note instead of just holding that last note. I added a little vibrato and then slid down right at the last moment. to create a little grace note on the end. So slides have this really neat sound. And that can add another nice contrast to a more scalar type approach as far as moving across the strings like I was doing earlier with the staccato and legato. So that is this, all I'm going to say about slides, but explore with those on your own, just like all of these ideas. The next area I want to talk about is bending. <laughs> bending is a great way to add some attitude and some character to the notes you're playing. So you can, there's a couple of ways that I'm going to talk about that you can use bending to create a different sound from the same note. So I'm going to take a simple little line like I was playing. I'm going to add some bends. So I could go that time I used a half step bend going from the A to the B flat or the fifth fret to the to the note that would be on the sixth fret. And then I went to the sixth fret and bent up a whole step to reach this note. So instead of playing just this, I played and on that second note, I didn't actually strike it again with my pick. What I did to create the same type of effect as striking it again would have done is I bent it again. I let it down and bent it quickly back up. It does kind of sound, it tricks the ear and sounds like you played the note again, which you just let it back down and came back to that same note. So, And one of the tricks here, when you're moving from a bend to another bend, is you gotta quickly release the, the previous note down, and then quickly slide up into the next bend. So that's one of the things you could do with bending. With When you're bending, you have options of how far you can bend. You've got your half step, your whole step, your minor third, which would be going to the note that's three frets up. You could even go further. That gets a little, a little hard on the hands. I mostly stick in the half step, whole step, and minor third areas for bending. But another idea that you can use 
with bending is to pre-bend and release back down on a note. Let's say I was coming to this note. So in that case, I'm starting at a higher note. I'm bending the note before I even pick it. And I can let it down at different speeds. I could go really fast. Or I could let it linger a little longer and get let it kind of just fade back down to that next note down. And that's kind of cool because it, it's stretching between the two notes, hitting all those microtones in between. So pre-bending is a pretty cool sound. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about with bending is the doubled bends. You may know these from rock and roll music. When you're playing a note and then you're playing the same, uh, playing the net excuse me, playing the next note down on the next string, then you're bending them, bending the next string into the, the note on the higher string. So here I'm on the third fret, sixth fret, on the first and second strings, and then I'm gonna use these two fingers, my first and third fingers, and I'm gonna use, hit them at the same time, and then bend into the G on the second string. Reminds me of Black Sabbath, which warms my heart because I grew up on that old school rock and roll. This next idea is already been kind of played with in some of the other things I talked about, but that is grace notes. And I'm going to talk a little more about them. So grace notes, typically on old written sheet music, you'd have a small note with a little line through it, and that just indicates that you play the note indicated by the small note with the line through it, really quickly before going to the full-sized regular note. And so what that looks like on guitar is just something like this. So the, the notes would be A, G, G. But if I added a grace note to the first one, I would go up from that G if I wanted to start there. I could even do a grace note from the note in between, the half step. You can also do grace notes above the note and come down to it. That sounds kind of cool. You could go high, more further above. There I did a minor third above the A. If you can reach that. That's a perfect fourth above. That's a major third above. I can use these little grace notes all over a simple line. So I take a simple line. And I add grace notes to each one. It might be a little excessive, but you could dial it back, maybe do half as many, like. And with the sliding, oftentimes you're doing a grace note as well because you're playing the note before it or the note next to it or above it and sliding instantly into the, the next note. So if you're doing that kind of a slide, that's just another grace note. Um, you can also do little grace note runs. I'm doing on D here, I'm just playing a half step up, pulling off to the D again. Half step down and then D. You can do it down here in the scale pattern. So 
Grace notes, great way to add a little flair. So like. You can see how adding all these little elements together creates a much more interesting sound than just playing a flat straight note every time. The final thing I want to talk about is a simple idea that I'm sure you're familiar with, but it's worth mentioning and that's vibrato. Whether you play with vibrato or not should be something you choose in the moment because each note might sound good one way or the other, but too much of one or the other can get over the top. So you don't want to be swinging a giant vibrato the whole time. What you want to do is alternate between pretty, you know, probably a moderate vibrato every once in a while going into a more wild one, but I like a little more subtle kind of vibrato. And I also like to play straight notes that with no vibrato. That way when I hit that vibrato, it's a change, it's a contrast. So <clears throat> play with that idea as well. So all of these kind of combine together, like I said, to create just a, a plethora of options for you to choose from. Go slowly at first, and go back through the different ones I talked about. I talked about staccato, legato, slides, bends, grace notes, and vibrato. So <clears throat> if it helps you, maybe write that list down and improvise to some kind of backing track or a metronome and try playing with some different some of these different techniques. And hopefully what you come up with is a way to create really musical, interesting ideas out of simple melodic lines. So simple scalar lines or simple melodies that you can create more character and interest by using these different techniques. Mm -hmm.